Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. We're going to take a break from electronic things and look at household items today. This is a Holmes space heater. And I'm just going to show you the model number because it's like super long. That's it right there. HCH5265C-BU. At Joe and Chino. And not California either. Anyways, you can see this filthy mess is in need of some help. This is the bathroom space heater that we use in our house and have been for the past couple of years. And uh, it's going into thermal shutdown simply because there's no more airflow coming out of the heat exchanger. And yeah, I have no idea how this one little tiny section got rusted. That's weird, but I can't explain that. So we're just going to go through the aspects of disassembly and cleaning and see if we can't restore its performance. I can't even see through the heat exchanger anymore. There's so much crap in there. But lint and dirt and whatever, as you can see, has accumulated. And it's kind of crusty looking. So it looks like we got screw there, screw there, screw there, and screw there. And I might have to remove the oscillating base. Not sure yet. There's probably a good chance that we do, but... And yeah, maybe just these two here. We'll find out, huh? So let's remove all those screws and see if we can get it apart. So if you remove the four screws on the back and the four ones on the perimeter here, you can separate the halves. And there's your heating element there from the front, which looks clean, but believe me, the back side's not. Uh, I'm going to take off the little neon lamp here so that we get a little more freedom by removing this uh, front cover. Okay, so now that that's away, uh, the front separates from the back, but as you can see, everything is attached to the back here. So what we need to do is separate the uh, heat exchanger here. These big four screws here all need to be removed, and then we should be able to just lift this up and away we're going to clean the back side and clean the fan and everything that's kind of uh, around it. So let me see if I can get the camera in a better position and we'll just go with this. All right, so let's start taking this apart. There's your little thermal switch up there. When this gets too hot, it's a bimetallic and it just opens up. which that seems awful tiny for uh, that purpose, but whatever. I'm going to slide, see if I can slide this. Nope. It's pretty well fixed. Oh, there we go. Slide that out of its little slot there. I can see the big giant gob of fuzz up here that's lurking. And let's see what bringing this down gets us. Oh, that holds the whole fan and everything. All right. So that just gets us the rest of the control panel and all that garbage. So what I really need to do is I'm trying to separate the heat exchanger. So let's put this back a moment. Just to make it easy, I'll put a couple screws back in. Bear in mind, this is the first time I've ever taken one of these apart because this is the first time it's actually malfunctioned. And all right. I think this is what I should have done in the first place. Show my hairy arm to everybody. Come on out. There we go. That's going to go hiding now. So we're just going to separate the... I'm going to mount this back in here. Separate the uh, heat exchanger from the fan. Because that's where all the clogged up garbage is. 
sure now it comes off of the oscillator plate. All right. Let's see if this gets me anywhere. Or if I have to take those support screws out. Looks like I might have to. Everything's just going to come out in a big mess. But like I said, my purpose here is to clean the heat exchanger, which is filthily clogged. So let's see if... Yep, now we'll separate here. Good. And looking at the back side, we can see how lovely that looks there. <laughs> That's pretty fancy. Ooh, and it's thick too. It's not just the regular dust. It's like caked on. That's the best kind. So I'm just going at this with a brush. Just trying to free as much of this garbage as we can. I'll probably end up vacuuming a bunch of it out too. Because it's pretty well caked in there. I think what I'm going to try to do is uh, see if, if I can get a different brush. And see if I can loosen up the garbage on the inside here. Oh yeah, there we go. There's some chunks. You can see wherever the dust accumulated all the discoloration from the excess heat buildup. I should probably do this more frequently than a couple of years. But most people, when it just stopped working, they would just throw it away. So let me get a thing, of a little can of air first. Now I'm out of that, so I'll do a little freeze mist upside down. Everything's going to fall out now. Blow all that out. Pretty gross. Clean out the housing here while I'm at it. I'll clean off the uh, fan. I got to admit, the fan motor on this thing is pretty stout for a little cheap room heater. I'm going to put a couple drops of oil in that bearing in there, just because. Why not? better. Okay. Got to go find my boiler syringe. And get a better pan out view here. I'm going to put some oil. This is Zoom Spout MO98 non-detergent turbine oil. Put a little bit down in there. If you want to struggle with getting the front hub off, you can, but it's pressed on here pretty well. I don't think they ever intended you to service that, but that's a pretty good bearing for what it is. I think I'm just going to leave that one be.
try and arrange everything so that I can get it back together here. This is just going to want to fall apart on me. Yeah. While we're at it, let's clean up the base because the base looks pretty ugly too. You can see it's full of whatever garbage fell down here. They just use a low RPM geared down motor for the oscillation. Might be better to lay this on its back so I'm not fighting gravity so much, but we'll see. What am I missing here? Maybe I was not paying attention about how this came apart. Uh, nope, just me being stupid. I kept trying to reinsert the control panel in the wrong direction and kept wondering why it wasn't going in. Alright, let's start reassembling this. the screws You look on this thing and you notice it still uses a mechanical thermostat, which is bimetallic. It still uses a bimetallic thermal overload. There's no digital stuff in this, which is kind of nice. I'm not a fan of anything digital these days. It's all very cheaply made. The home, Holmes things are not terrible. For the most part, yeah, they're made in China. They're not great, but... They do, uh, they do seem to last. Yeah, I don't think that's the right screw for that. Seems like it should be, but... It wants to stop about an eighth of an inch before the... Screw tightens down. I think those are it. The length on these vary just the tiniest little bit. Now we'll slide our thermal overload switch back in here, taking care that the wires are out of the way of any heat source.
that's just a press fit in there. Yeah, let's put it on its back here and see if we can't get the oscillator plate to line up. This is where it's going to fight you a little bit. Might be better to put the two halves together and then try it. Alright, so let me put the neon lamp back in place. We'll dust this out too, just for the sake of doing it. The neon lamp is just here to tell you that there's the presence of AC on the machine. It doesn't actually tell you that it's on or not. Okay, let's put the two halves together. Okay, now let's see if we can get the holes to line up. Looks like they will. course there's always going to be one that fights you Sure, everything is tight. And we'll do the back screws. The ones that go through the back have really thin heads, very narrow heads to them. stuck on there. Yeah, bathrooms are nasty places because you've got, in my case, the wife does use hair products so those little particulates are floating around and attach themselves to dust and lint and clothing and toilet paper use. Yes, toilet paper does leave lint floating around. So all of that accumulates Try to flick out some of these thicker pieces of dust here. They're pretty well stuck to the vents. Okay, let's clean this thing up and give it a once over. Okay, so wipe down a little bit, a little bit better looking now. Let's uh, plug it in and see. We can get it to run for a length of time without it uh, shutting off. That was the major problem we had. A lot more airflow. Gets hot real fast.
I'm going to go ahead and let it run for a little bit on high heat. Usually it takes about two to three minutes for it to uh, shut off. But with the amount of airflow that's coming out of here now, I don't think that's going to be an issue. this run a little bit and then we'll come back to it okay well it's been running about five minutes and uh, still running full blast no shutdown no nothing so I'm gonna kill the heat let the fan cool it down and then we'll shut it off and we're done I don't know if it actually makes it last longer but I've been told that uh, with these new ceramic element heaters like this that you should let it run on fan to cool the element down rather than just turning it off and letting the heat linger. But I don't know. could be one of those old wives' tales. I'm used to those big clunky ones from the 60s and 70s. They're just big electric, uh, what's that stuff called, nichrome wire heaters that actually heat your house and not just pretend to uh, but you know fire hazards and such all right you see the fan spinning down good bearing taking a while okay so this sucker's done I can stick this back in the bathroom because it got down into the low 40s last night, and for San Diego, that's pretty cold for October. Um, I'm thinking we're going to have a pretty chilly winter this year. So this will be helpful in warming up the bathroom. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this uh, little sidetrack video, and uh, we'll be sure to get back into the fisher soon.